Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Berg. I'm a district wildlife biologist for the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. We're here today at a unit of the Klickitat Wildlife Area in Klickitat County in the Columbia River Gorge. So the work we're doing today is we're trapping turtles to find candidates uh, to go into treatment for shell disease. Shell disease is a devastating new disease and we're trying to learn more about it. We're trying to learn what causes it, how it spreads, does it affect their survival or their reproduction, and then also can we treat it. And so the turtles that we capture today that are sick will bring those turtles to the Oregon Zoo where the veterinarians there will care for them and um, do this treatment that we're learning about and hopefully in the future will be successful in um, helping the fight against the shell disease. Western pond turtles face a lot of challenges. Um, first of all is habitat and habitat loss. So probably the main reason for the historic decline in Western pond turtles is habitat loss. If we look at the Columbia River, um, before there were dams, railroads, highways, that sort of thing, there were probably a lot of wetlands, ponds that were connected, um, there's turtles right across the river from us in Oregon. Probably at one time, the Washington and Oregon turtles were connected. So that habitat loss um, probably played a big part in the decline of turtles. Uh, the other major factor is um, predation, especially by non-native species. Some freshwater fish that were introduced as sport fish, um, but for us, mainly bullfrogs. Bullfrogs are not native to the West Coast. They were brought here um, for people to hunt, and they are very good predators. The turtles, when they come out of the nests, are about this big, and they're very easy prey for bullfrogs. So when we evaluated this site and others in the late 80s, early 90s, we found that there were no young turtles. And obviously, if there's no young, they're not growing up, the population's not growing. And so it's really crucial for us um, to try to remove non-native predators like bullfrogs, in addition to improving habitat and doing things like researching the shell disease. These turtles are a great indicator of wetland health and wetlands are important to many other species too. Like I mentioned, other um, reptiles and amphibians, um, not only that, rare plant species, um, you know, we have ducks that live in this pond. And so these guys are good at recycling nutrients and playing a part as both predator and prey in these ecosystems. So there's a lot people can do to protect turtles. Um, one thing is thinking about habitat. What kind of habitat do you have maybe even in your backyard or your neighborhood? Is there a way for you to help protect that habitat or improve that habitat? Um, another thing is non-native species. Bullfrogs are just one. Um, other non-native turtles, especially red-eared sliders, people like to have those as pets and then they don't realize how long they live and they think that maybe I'll just go put it in this pond in my backyard. Well, that is not good. Um, red-eared sliders can directly compete with both Western pond turtles and Western painted turtles. Um, another thing you can do is just learn more. And the more you know, more knowledge you spread, uh, the more people can learn about turtles and, and their plight. Um, there's great exhibits about Western pond turtles at both the Woodland Park and Oregon Zoo. So I would encourage you to go visit the Oregon Zoo and learn about turtles. They're also uh, one of our main partners in this project. So they dedicate a lot of time and money. And so your dollars that you spend to go to the zoo, some of those actually go to conservation projects like the one here. So this type of work is not funded by hunting and fishing license dollars, but by other things like federal fish and wildlife service grants, like state wildlife grants. Um, also, the particular research we're doing on shell disease in terms of its effect on reproduction and the treatments is funded by a competitive state wildlife grant. 
Also, personalized license plates are a big one in Washington. It's pretty unique. So if you get a license plate that says your name on it, um, that money goes to help conserve non-game species. Um, so those are kind of our main funders. Also, big partners like the Woodland Park Zoo, the Oregon Zoo, Shedd Aquarium, University of Illinois, um, PAWS, all sorts of people help make these programs work by donating their time and their money. Turtles, I think, are actually pretty charismatic. I don't know anyone who doesn't like turtles, <laughs> so that's, that's fun. Uh, both um, adults and kids alike, when we get them out here to experience this, they can really appreciate um, how cool it is to see an animal like this in the wild. It's rare and um, yeah, it's just awesome to see people's reactions uh, are so positive to turtles and hopefully it helps them, you know, appreciate nature and just wildlife in general and the work that we do in our agency, both on game and non-game species.